Hello, this is Michael Campbell with Glossica, and I'm really honored to be here today with Alexander Arguelles. And Alexander is known throughout the world for being one of the most prominent polyglots who has studied and speaks fluently dozens of languages, maybe even a hundred by now, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's a very large number of languages. And all of these accomplishments Having been said, he's now working on a new vision and uh, to really help people with their language learning throughout the world. And we'd like to hear more about all of the projects he's working on and all of the new developments in your life recently. So thank you okay. for well, this opportunity to meet you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Um, just to clarify something, I mean, I have, I do love languages. I'm passionate about it. I've been doing it professionally, systematically, in a very disciplined fashion most of my life. I have probably studied about a hundred languages, but studied and know, be able to okay. use, I think you know, they're very different things. So um, I have some form of knowledge of, of uh, a hundred languages, but you've got a very vast database in your head as well. So it's been a real pleasure talking to you about ergative languages and, yeah. and things like that. So. Um, We'd like to throw out the little bit of exaggerations there anyway. Okay, <laughs> very good, very good. Um, you want to know? But, 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 but in reality, we're, we, all, we all struggle to actually bring that fluency to life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's, there's limitations to the, to the human capacity. Right, there certainly are. At, at least there is for me, I can't compare with you. <laughs> uh, there's only so many hours in a day. Yeah, uh, that's that, true. That's an experience that I... I, I ran into a brick wall of that about 20 years ago after okay. I'd spent so much time being passionate about learning as many languages as I possibly could. And I realized after a certain point, hey, wait a minute, if you study systematically in a disciplined fashion every day for 15 minutes a day, you can go from knowing nothing to having a solid foundation in a year. But if you want to go up to the next level, a solid foundation to you know a, a real basic functional working knowledge, that needs half an hour a day. And then if you want to go to a higher level, that needs an hour a day. And even a higher level, this many is, hours a day. This is perhaps the key to language learning right here. 15 minutes a day. And each and every single day. Each and every day. For how long? Well, it depends on the language, you know, if, if you know it's if the language is similar to yours. If it's but if it's Korean to English, then... Uh, Korean, that, would, that would take a couple of years, maybe. A couple know, of years at 15 yeah. minutes a day. Yeah. But if you increase that to half an hour a day... Definitely, you could get, you know, a solid foundation, I think, within a year, year and a half. And then if you're doing an hour a day and more intensively, it, yeah. it really changes the, 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 the time window the, to mm -hmm. acquiring the language. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And so what you did originally was... Um, uh, Kind of structure your day so you're doing um, in different time slots you'd be working on different languages so exactly could, okay yeah. I, uh, I mean I got started studying basically comparative historical linguistics in university I got my doctorate in an area like that and so I you know just went through a whole cycle of all the older Germanic languages and uh, just got a deep philological understanding too of how Latin changed into the modern Romance languages uh, and so from there I branched out into Korean, just because I wanted the challenge of learning a really totally different language in the culture. And then while I was in Korea, also did uh, your areas, Japanese, Chinese, classical Chinese, all the, uh, the, for a while. And that's when I got my, started building my language laboratory and just had material for studying, you know, hundreds of languages and just wanted to learn, for various reasons, I wanted to learn some languages because they were in a family that I knew everything else already and I wanted to know them all. I wanted to learn other languages because they were different. I wanted to see what they were like. <clears throat> so yeah, I spent about five or six years just uh, obsessively, fanatically studying languages all day, every day, you know, in those 10, 15 minute time slots, um, you know, and then working at them. And then at the end of that time period realized yeah, getting that foundation is one thing, but taking some of them that are really meaningful to me, like Arabic, to the much higher level, that requires just an investment of time that, you know, yeah. given our lifespans and, you know, the way the day is structured, you know, night and day, there's just only so many hours in a day. So yeah. that's the limit is, is, is that. As far as getting a, a general introductory knowledge of a language, I mean, you get to the point where you've accumulated so much experiences across a vast number of languages and language families that when you see something new although it's different you can almost piece it together in your mind because you you kind of know how human communication works already mm -hmm. is that true 
Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to give my talk on my experience learning Finnish in about two hours, and that's basically what I'm going to report, is that Finnish is totally different from any language I've studied in that, you know, it's an Uralic language. I've never learned an Uralic language before. I, you know, it's the vocabulary is basically unrelated to anything else. But when I looked at the structure, when I looked at the grammar, it was just like simplified, streamlined Korean. Know, with a sprinkling of inflections thrown in. There was nothing I hadn't seen before. Oh, great. So I looked at this and it's like, Finnish has this reputation of being pretty difficult, but then I looked at it and it's like, no, based on my experience, there's, there's no challenge there. It's something yeah. that you've done. So actually, um, for a Korean speaker, Finnish probably makes a lot of sense, in a, despite I, the I, vocabulary I, difference. Yeah, I, yeah. I've run into that many times now that Koreans, a lot of them are missionaries, might go to South America and be in, in Peru and encounter Quechua or clandestinely in a place like Turkey and learning Turkish or yes learning something like you know another agglutinated language and it's like hey this is this is easy you know the, the structure there does seem to be uh, lended there's a lot of transfer that you can get of knowledge of structure not just you know real vocabulary or specific you know specific endings but just the basic structure so in your whole career what do you envision as your opus magnum are you still working on that what, what are your passions in, in envisioning for for the final Final stage. Uh, I am, you know, for many years I have talked about, dreamed about, you know, just sort of. Um, again, I, I reached my limits of what I can do in my time, uh, and I just I like sharing my passion. I like sharing my knowledge. I do believe that that's something that can be uh, transferred as as well. I mean, uh, it took me a long time to develop. You know some of the the knowledge, the know-how, the skills that I have, uh, and I do think that that's something I can you know just as you can transfer your knowledge of one language, I think those are things that I could transfer to other people, uh, so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel and learn how to do that. And so I do think that there w might be a, a way, a place for you know. Uh, uh, sort of an academy, not necessary for polyglottery, but for people who are really serious and passionate about learning languages. Uh, uh, this is happening all over the world, particularly in the States, that uh, you know, universities and schools are closing language departments, and I think when that happens, maybe 60 or 70 percent of the people are happy, but the, the 20 or 30 percent are unhappy. Where are they going to go? What are they going to do? These people need to be more self-sufficient in their learning as well. So I just, I've always enjoyed sharing knowledge, sharing know-how with uh, other people, hoping that this will facilitate their quest, their, you know, their learning so that they can do it more efficiently, not waste time and have a better experience and uh, just, just uh, get better at it. Um, so I've sort of envisioned this sort of academy or institute or training place for a long time and now I find myself in a, in a professional position where I think I'm actually going to be able to do it. Um, that is at uh, Concordia Language Villages in, in uh, Minnesota, where I'm the director of the intensive immersion programs for Italian, German, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, and Finnish. Um, and they have about 15 languages, and they're open to others. And, uh, you know, this is many of the professorships I've held around the world uh, because in my, uh, got a multidisciplinary degree that has the word history in it several times, comparative history of religions, comparative historical linguistics, history this, history that. Oh, you universities, have yeah, his, his, comparative religions too? Yep. Wow. So okay. universities will look at that and say, oh, history, we need a history professor. So right. in Dubai, I was teaching history. And that was interesting for me. I was teaching Middle East history. I was right. learning more about the Middle East. I was using my Arabic to do that. Um, but in many of my positions, I have felt like I've been hired uh, abroad as an American. Oh, we want an American. Here's a smart guy. He's got a good background. Yeah, there's, you know, but they're not really interested in me, who I am, what I can do. This position, they are. They know exactly who I am. They know what I want to do. Uh, and what I stand for. If people are interested in coming to a place where they can learn efficiently, learn how to learn, and you know, do these kind of things, I'm in a position to uh, set that up. I've got that um, resource library. I think I have 100 materials for learning 142 different languages. Oh. I don't have many Taiwanese uh, indigenous languages. Maybe you'll share some of those. I'll, I'll get a larger collection. But sure. I've got this massive, and it really breaks my heart that you know I have. I, I say anybody want to borrow it, you can, and 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 nobody does. So I would love to be in a place where people could come, right. take these things use the material, right. learn how they're doing, and in particular the languages that are taught at, at Concordia. Go to these villages first and foremost, have an experience similar to what I had in Finnish, which was a very positive, active immersion experience from the word go that was very productive, and then I think everybody taking their experience, once you can do that with one language, you could recreate that, you could learn how to do that more and more effectively with others. So I, I guess I'm kind of picking up from 
I have two sons, one's uh, 16, one's 14. I've been homeschooling them all through high school, and teaching them lots of languages. Uh, I've always spoken French with them, uh, so I'm German, Latin, Spanish, a little bit of Russian, Korean. Um, and so, yeah, sharing languages with my sons first and foremost, and with other people who are, you know, who might be interested in them. That's that's where my vision is now. I I I've sort of, I don't think the brain can really get full, but you know, I've done what you know what I need, what I want for myself with languages. You know, I don't have uh, this burning desire to go master Tibetan or you know to do other things, but it's more yeah. to help other people at this point. So I found that um, because most of the people that we interact with in the world, uh, their primary focus in life is not languages. They have careers in the sciences mm -hmm. or, in the, or in other professions. Um, but I found that if people were to uh, spend more time on working with languages, it's sort of a, a logical thing that can actually help them in their other careers. Do you have a, a position on this? Do you think that people spending a little bit more time working with a variety of languages rather than uh, kind of as a as an exercise a brain exercise do, do you think that that would actually help them in their careers yes uh, but then, then again I'm speaking as a language lover but I mm -hmm. do think that there's science behind it that says that well not even necessarily science I mean, language you know is a vehicle of culture and you know just learning different cultures have different perspectives different ways of doing things uh, and so when you really learn a, a different language, you learn a different culture, that expands your horizons. Uh, and that can be seen as purely practical, okay? Uh, you could uh, forget about languages and just go and be you know, a businessman in, in, in China based on that. You could transfer those skills. So you could just take that. But even within what you're doing, you know, when you understand what makes other people tick, how they work, I think that is something you could so transfer it, to anything. It does expand people's, um, their, their view of the world and become more, I guess as the Chinese say, baorong, they, they become more um, uh, acceptable of, of the differences in the world because uh, oftentimes I find that living in another culture, I may have been taught to do something a certain way. In another culture, they do it another way. The final result is the same. Mm -hmm. So why, why get upset if somebody wants to do something a different way, right? I'd yeah. like to ask you a question. Do, uh, do you ever find that uh, motivation is sometimes a problem with your students, and how do you overcome that? Uh, motivation to learn language. to learn a language. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, that's a, that's a critical thing. And uh, how do you address that? God, to be perfectly frank, I just you know there are some students you look at them and you would have to give it on more honest. I'd say if you're not motivated, you shouldn't be doing this. I mean, there's lots of things to do in life other than yeah. you know uh, than learn languages. And if you're not absolutely required to do this and you're not motivated to do it, then go to something that you're motivated for. You know. Okay. Um, All right. So, but you know, I think that motivation becomes a problem when you somebody when there's when there's a dichotomy when somebody says, I I really want to learn this language, um, but their behavior, their action, the study habits, whatnot, betray that they've got conflicting motivation, they have other motivation that, you know, that they're not clear about it. You know? okay. So again, the ones who, uh, you know, I don't think everybody should study languages. I don't think everybody should do anything. I think, you know, th there's a lot of things other people should be doing. So um, when somebody comes and they, they don't have no motivation to learn a language, it's, what are you doing this for? It's but sometimes it's like, like, like I hear friends saying, I want to lose weight, but mm -hmm. they're never able to, exactly. to, to, they don't do to take the weight off, right? right? So yeah. they, but there are people, yeah. But there are people who say, you know, who ad adamantly say you want to learn the language, right. um, and then it's the same sort of. I don't know. I, I do think that there's a. Um, there can be. Maybe there should more often be sort of a. a not honestly spiritual is a bit strong, but you know, a, a discipline, a, a practice area, you know, okay. an attitude, a lifestyle of uh, learning languages. If you come to me and you say, hey, I really want to learn this language, but you know, I say just like the weight loss or the other people who sign up for things, they're not doing it, that's what I would say, okay. Look, you, you brush your teeth every day, right? You know, you do some, there are things that you do every day. So every habit is the way we get things done. So make it a habit. It was great talking to t talking to you today, yeah. and thank you for having uh, you know sharing all of your insights on on language learning. Okay, and right. I wish you all the success with uh, with that vision. Thank you. Okay.